welcome to another edition of Senior Connections, the show that is produced by the Senior Activity Center of Sheboygan. My name is Wendy Schmitz. I'm the supervisor of the Senior Center. And today, my guest is Kay Jelinek, who is also a member of the Senior Center and um, an advocate of the Sheboygan Visual Artists. And Kay, what I would like to start out asking you is um, how you came to live in Sheboygan. Well, I lived in Janesville with my husband and we had two sons. I taught art there for 30 years as well as art in Monroe and uh, Milton and was always a producer of art, always created art. <laughs> Um, was also a member of Janesville Art League, so I had a very busy artistic life. Um, in 2004, my husband died, and we lived out in the country on 15 and a half acres. For four years, I continued to live there, um, mowing all the grass and <laughs> etc., and decided that maybe I would like to move up to Sheboygan because I have a son and his wife and a granddaughter here. So five years ago, I made the big move to Sheboygan. Um, during that time, I had a condo built and didn't do art for a short time. But as I was reading the Sheboygan Press, I noticed that there was a group called the Sheboygan Visual Artists. And when I first came here, I went to uh, the Kohler Art Center, hoping they would have a venue for local artists to exhibit. And then it went through my mind, well, <clears throat> if there isn't a really uh, good venue for that, do I have to come up here and start another art league? But then I noticed the Sheboygan Visual Artists, and about three years ago I joined them. And I was just utterly amazed at the, uh, we're now up to about uh, 58 artists and 11 or 12 patrons from from six. Can I just go back a little sure. bit? So when you made the determination to come to Sheboygan, basically it was because you had family here. Or, or did you look at Sheboygan and measure it against another community um, for your involvement in art? Did, did that play a factor in your choice of where to live? Actually, I was pretty sure that I was coming to Sheboygan because my son had been teaching here a while and my husband and I used to come up here to see him, of course, and his wife. And I could never leave Sheboygan because I was always drawn to the lake and I would wow. always have to go by the lake and sit and then pull myself away. I'd also brought Janesville Art League up here on a trip, on a bus trip. And so I had a fondness for the artistic things that were happening in the community. My son, other son and his family and four children live in Stillwater. They're very, very, very much into sports. And I hate to say I am, I'm not. <laughs> so as much as I love them, Sheboygan was a good fit for me. So as a single person coming into this community, um, we often meet people at the Senior Center. In fact, yesterday, a gentleman in exactly the same circumstances um, sh came to the Senior Center and said, you know, I've, I've recently moved back to Sheboygan uh, for family. Um, how difficult or how easy is that transition as a newly single person to come back into a community or to come here for the first time? Well, I knew pretty much everybody. You know, I knew the doctors, the dentists, the artists, um, the teachers, my husband's friends. Um, and I think it was like I had to start all over here. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm finally feeling after five years that I, I know enough people so all those gaps are filled in. 
Um, I think that happened because I didn't join the Senior Center at first, but my draw to the Senior Center is coming for yoga, mm -hmm. and that's really important to me. And I can see what a beautiful building it is and how many opportunities there are there, and I see all kinds of people taking advantage of those. And with your trips and everything, it's a very comprehensive, exciting thing. I also uh, represent Sheboygan Visual Artists at the Chamber Deep Dive mm -hmm. meetings. And so I was coming to your um, After Five um, celebration through the Chamber and was really impressed with all that you brought together for that. So while I'm currently coming to the um, Senior Center, I, my main emphasis is still the Sheboygan Visual Artists because I'm friends with 70 people there. Now I remember <clears throat> when you first came to the Senior Center, and um, if my memory serves me right, um, you had already lived in Sheboygan for a few years, and then you very much made a connection with SVA. Mm -hmm. And since then, like you said, I seem to see you everywhere advocating for them. Um, what was it about that group? And tell us a little bit more about SVA. Well, Frank Juarez is an art teacher at the North High School. And in uh, July on the 23rd in 2007, he got a group of five people together at Urbane. Now, is he still an art teacher? Yes. Okay. He's you. an advocate in the state, in the whole state. He's an advocate nationally okay. for the arts. He's very involved in anything having to do with the visual arts. But back in 2007, uh, he felt a need for getting artists together to socialize and to discuss art. And so there were five of them that met at Urbane and started to um, become a group. Well, <clears throat> fast forward to now, 2013, six years later, uh, now instead of six, there are 58 plus 12 um, patrons and probably more, and we're getting new members often. So now the challenge with SVA is to program and keep up with all the new members, promoting their art, uh, promoting the arts in the community, offering people um, activities that we draw you know, the community into. And we have, SVA has seven final Fridays. Every final Friday um, through June, starting in September with the new members show, we have events at EBCO Artworks, which is on uh, 12th and Erie. And there's always an exhibit, uh, music, food. Mm -hmm. um, the artists discuss what they, what they um, want to about the art that they exhibit. But we also have three other things that are really uh, bigger. One is the holiday uh, show and sale. And that has, has extended gallery hours. Then there's the member show, which is juried, which is another exciting thing. But probably the biggest thing we do and promote is the small works. And small works uh, make it so that everybody can have a piece of original art for a very low price. Can I ask you, how does one become a member? Uh, we have an excellent site. It's, it's called SheboyganVisualArtist.com. And we also have a Facebook site. And on the SheboyganVisualArtist.com, it tells you all about joining and what you need to do. We are a jury group, so you can't just pay your $40, which is the yearly fee, and join. You have to submit uh, 10 works of art. Uh, on, on the internet, and sometimes that's hard for some people, so we help them. Uh, Richard Beeman is in charge of membership right now. He's also in charge of small works, and so is Jay Parsons. 
But going back to membership, um, if you go online, you can, um, you can see what's needed. And the site includes uh, places for all the artists to display their work individually. It tells about upcoming shows. It tells about uh, anything that people, like as an artist for SBA, I go on, I have a special code I can put in and then I can get access to the members' um, personal emails or whatever I need to do that way. Now, um, we're, we're a city of 49,000 people. It seems like we have a lot of art in this community. Is that unusual to have that many people? Or, or are, we, uh, you know, are we unique in, in this area? Well, I'm still a member of Janesville Art League, and that group started in the late 1800s and has a big collection. <laughs> oh, wow. But that group is quite different from the Sheboygan Visual Artists. For one thing, there's about a 50-50 balance of men and women in Sheboygan Visual Artists. And I, and I have to preface this by saying don't take this wrong, but we have men who are totally dedicated to producing art, as well as women. But to see so many people that really make art a priority is really exciting. And that's just part of it, because there's the Kohler Art Center, there's the right. Plymouth Art Center, there are galleries, there's Milwaukee nearby. I mean, it is so heavily loaded with art that, you know, it's, it's amazing. If you're an artist and you love art, there are so many opportunities. You just and and another opportunity is when people are members of the senior center, there are arts-related things there, and maybe you can tell us a little bit about that. That <laughs> I feel like I'm being interviewed. Yes, um, of course, uh, we have um, art classes that are available. And even though our art co coordinator is actually retiring, um, we are going to have local artists such as yourself coming into the center and teaching classes. So I think we have a piece of work from Michelle Guterres, mm -hmm. um, the Blue Jay, yeah. and she is going to be teaching um, a basic class. Um, oh, I'm sorry, that's Jay's. Oh, no, no this it is, isn't. No, yeah, this that's is Michelle's. Michelle's. Right, mm -hmm. Jay's is the one in front. Mm -hmm. Michelle and Jay are both artists uh, who belong to the Senior Center, and Michelle is teaching a class. Um, and we're encouraging local artists to come in and share their expertise. So we're looking forward to that. Uh, we also have an example here of some of the small works that have been produced from the Senior Center. Can you explain a little bit about the Small Works Project? And then I can explain how some of our people got involved in that. Well, <clears throat> excuse me, Small Works um, it was started a few years ago. I think it's three years ago. Uh, Richard Beeman and Jay Parsons are co-chairs. It's been a very, very successful fundraising event for Sheboygan Visual Artists because some of the proceeds from this go to support art in the gardens at the Bookworm Gardens. And so SVA artists um, put in a proposal to Richard, and then there are free workshops at the gardens um, during the summer. And I personally have gone to several and been a participant because it's open to adults and children. And there have been some really exciting ones. Patty Acker did some um, silk painting. Um, I know last year they were doing some printing type things. I've seen tie dyeing shirts, uh, oil painting with Dale Kanak, um, just all kinds of fun things. Um, and we're in the process now, Richard and Jay are in the process of getting the artists to sign up. And many, many artists from the community, as well as SBA artists, do small works. And one of them is Carrie, and you have to help me with Carrie Kautza, <laughs> yes. the director of 
<laughs> the show that we're on right now. And Carrie's <laughs> pieces are a really lovely addition to small works. And when, when you think you want to be a part of this, you can do a couple of things. One is SVA gives you a small canvas or more, and you can paint on it, you can put a collage on it, you can do whatever, a photograph. We have a lot of photographers that mm -hmm. put photographs on. Mm -hmm. Then there are people that contribute uh, glass or pottery, uh, things that aren't on a canvas. Um, and then the public and SVA artists can buy claim tickets prior to the event, which is held on Friday, August 23rd at EBCO from 4 to 8. You can buy tickets at the community uh, bank and trust places or at Bookworm Gardens or at EBCO when there are events or any SVA members. You, the night of the finale, you bring in your claim ticket and you pick out a number from a basket. That number relates to one of the small works that's on the wall of about 300 pieces or more. If you pick a number and you love the work and want to keep it, you keep it. If you, would, if you have your eye on something else and you want to go into the main gallery to the trading wall, you can wait until something shows up that you want to replace it with. And that's where the fun starts in. And some people are there from four to eight. And you've been there, I guess, yep. so you know all about that part of it. It's a, it's a pretty intense fun night. Unfortunately, and fortunately for me, um, the couple of times, I think uh, two years now, I have purchased my claim ticket and I've liked both pieces <laughs> that I got first time. <laughs> so I've never had the thrill of going to the wall and, and finding something else. I've, I've, I've gone to the wall and looked at the other pieces, but I've always liked the ones that, uh, that we were given straight off the bat. So. You're lucky. <laughs> I know, I know. And uh, uh, the, the last year we purchased one for a grandson and uh, he just loved it. It was a bird. So um, uh, we're going back again this year to get another piece for another grandson. So it's really exciting for us to be able to have this original art in our home and to start the children getting them. But what I'm most excited about is the fact that so many of the seniors are participating in this project now. When we first started this um, with Richard, uh, you know, he came and said, do you think you'd be interested? And it was like, oh, yeah, I think we might be able to get some people. And, for example, Mary Fritz was, was one of the artists who, who, um, who got involved. And, and maybe she did one piece that year. Um, and she was a beginning artist at that time. And three years later, um, she's producing um, a number of pieces. And... To me, her work has improved significantly. And this is just a small sampling of what we've done this year. Um, the, the, we have a painter's group that meets on a Thursday. And they kind of inspired everybody. But this has been going on now for months that we've had this box of canvases and they, they just keep uh, painting and painting. And I think what's really nice is it gives the senior artists a sense of purpose um, that they're producing for, for this particular um, fundraiser. Do you get that sense that, you know, they get to get people, the people who come to the painters group and, and the artists who take classes at the senior center are, are obviously love art and they love to, to work. But this has given it a particular direction, I think. Well, <clears throat> the people that come are so proud. They come and want yes. to show off their piece. And that's exciting. And so we know they're taking ownership. Uh, Susan Baumgart is uh, one of the ones from the Senior Center who's very active. But she's a new member of SVA and very active with us, too, as is uh, Mary came in and she said, I really want to be involved in Sheboygan Visual Artists. So right now she's signed up as a patron, which doesn't mean she oh. can't move into the artist category. But patrons don't pay the $40 fee. 
they um, do some kind of work for SVA. Really? A, a greeter, a helper with uh, food, um, helping at workshops, whatever, whatever they choose to do. And what's really lovely about this particular fundraising project is that you're passing on, we're, as seniors, we're mentoring those children and, and I'm guessing passing on the pa passion for art, mm -hmm. you know, which I think is really exciting. I love this particular piece I do too. because it's a nice mix of fabric and, um, and paint. And then, and then this one here is uh, Dorothy really enjoys like a collage too. kind of. Last year she did a, a, a knitted prayer shawl that was a miniature prayer shawl and then the poem on the side I love that piece mm. too but that had already gone by the time I got my claim ticket otherwise I would have loved but that. you're right about passion for uh, art for children I taught art ki kindergarten through adults and um, one of the things in the summer the Janesville Public Schools offered a lot of art classes for kids and I taught in those classes and and some of the children would start with painting and then they'd go to sculpture with me and then they'd stay for fa uh, fibers. So I think I, over the years I taught, saw such intensity and love for the arts. Uh, and I continue to see it. I mean, people sometimes walk in off the street to one of our SVA events and they say they're looking for places where they can be involved in the arts. And that's important to me because I didn't have art in elementary school or high school at really? all. Really? So the first um, contact I really, I mean, I did art because my dad had a supermarket and there were boxes and reams of paper and all, and we did a lot. There were five of us in our family. But my first contact with real art was going to college at Viterbo College in La Crosse. And then wow. I went on to get my master's at UW's and have done more credits beyond that. But for a person who didn't have art in the schools and suddenly found out how important art is in my life, it's very important for me to advocate for the visual arts because they can offer, all of the arts can offer everybody so much. And you don't have to say, well, I can't even draw a straight line with a ruler because that has right. nothing to do with art. But it's just such an enjoyable way to fill your life with art and with people and to hear what other people are thinking and doing. And that's very stimulating. What I think think is one of the most exciting things that I've learned uh, since starting to work at the Senior Center, which has given me a real sense of hope in my, per my own personal life, is that some people walk in as newly retired people, and as I'm doing a tour, they laugh when we get to the art and craft room, and they go, yeah, I've never been able to do art. And one of the best things that Jeannie has ever done is to teach me through these tours that so many of us come in, unfortunately, from bad experiences at school. And she encourages us that there's, it's never too late to start. And I really do look forward to having the time to be able to pursue some of those um, opportunities. I have a brother and sister who are both artists. <laughs> And I wonder wh why it missed me in the family. But um, it truly has shown me, wh when I look at Mary, um, she's inspired me that, you know, I can look forward to the future and think that when I retire, I have those opportunities. And, and there's, it, this is all around us, and there's so many people to help you. You know, Jay is extremely helpful, as is Michelle, as is Susan. Mm -hmm. And... Um, they just constantly say, this is the place to come and to feel safe. And I love that. You know, a safe place to make mistakes, a safe place to learn. And, and I think SVA sounds like that uh, continues that process. Well, to me, the word mistake was a really good word because I preach almost that the main thing people have to get 
used to is not being afraid to make mistakes because yes. you learn from mistakes. And I had a art professor uh, in one of my cl painting classes. He said, the reason you and a friend of mine, Kathy Belling, who, who passed away, but the reason you two make so much progress is because you're not afraid to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. And I think too often we put the emphasis on the outcome, not on the experience of creating. And the experience of creating, if you let it, can be very rewarding. And at the elementary level even, it wasn't the finished product that was so important. It was what went through the child's mind or the process yes. of getting to that. Of course, we all want to have something that's a good product, but to me, that's not the, the main thing. Um, and, there, you know, there's another thing, too. Not all people have to create art because the art, there's also an art to enjoying what you see. And as an artist and pretty prolific uh, and having a lot of my own art and having some in exhibits, too, I still buy a lot of people's art. And it isn't that I need art on my wall because it's covered and I have more than I can put up at one time, so I rotate it. But it's that I'm buying a piece of, of that person's vision and I'm promoting that person because I'm buying a piece of art which encourages him or her to continue to do art. And that's really important to me. Well, I would just like to wrap up by saying that um, if people um, know somebody from SVA and we can certainly help out at the Senior Center, you can buy your own piece of personal art for $20 if you do it ahead of time. Otherwise, uh, the evening of August 23rd will be $25 for w one of these pieces or many others. And uh, I'd like to thank you, Kay, for not only being a member of the Senior Center, but for being on our show today. It's been really interesting. Well, thank you so much. I've enjoyed it. You're welcome.